अल्ले सम्म जति जोखिम भए पनि जोखिमै भए पनि अल्ले सम्म त्यस कारणले गर्दा खेरि अलिकति नडराउने मान्छे बलियो मान्छे हात खुट्टाले काम गर्न नसक्ने त्यस्तो खालको मान्छे जानु पर्छ त्यस्तोले मात्रै गर्छ Just over that is a huge drop and they look totally comfortable. Is getting ready there like having a chuckle. Yo poto ko hani jain ke huncha bhanda kiri aile ko postik pani huni ani ali lagne khalko huncha. Dherai prayog garna hundaina badi ma jibra ma hamile thore rakhe bhane parra lagcha ra sikha jastai tyo patai pasadi chai kelle People drive like maniacs kind of in Kathmandu. There's a weird order to it. So everyone sort of, you know, manages not to kill each other like every 5 seconds even though it feels like it. We're heading west into the Annapurna Mountains, basically the foothills of the Himalayas. And we're going to meet up with the Gurung. It's a community indigenous to this region of Nepal. And twice a year, they harvest honey from these very high cliffs. It's one of the oldest methods of harvesting honey in the world. And this time of year in the spring, that honey is rich with rhododendron pollen, which has a psychedelic effect. We're not exactly sure what the effect is or how they use it, but we're going to join them on their honey hunt and try some of the honey and see what the effects are. We came to Nepal seeking a rare intoxicant known as mad honey, a wild honey infused with a substance called grainotoxin that comes from rhododendron flowers. Mad honey has a range of reputations from an aphrodisiac to a cure-all medicine, a deadly poison, and a powerful psychedelic drug. To find out what mad honey is to the gurung, we embarked on a long journey through the mountains of Nepal to the tiny gurung village of Dalochipla. That is an incredible view. It's just so vast. Once you get up here, you can just see for miles. It's kind of hard to describe or capture the sheer magnitude of how far and how deep these mountains go. When the paved roads came to an end, a group of gurung came to help us hike 3 more hours up to their village. This is the man right here, Mingma. He's our Sherpa. We have 13 guys carrying our stuff. There's all the camera gear and everything. And they showed me how to carry their baskets earlier using their foreheads. I gave it a try. Kitna lamba aapne kaha tha? Ye 3 4 kilometer ka tha ya? 10 15. 10 15. This is how people tend to roll out here. So I got to say, I kind of feel like a bitch for not carrying my own stuff. But, you know, when in Rome, right? When in Annapurna. That's like a thing too. Like, you know, we got all this hiking gear. These guys are wearing like flip-flops and like a short sleeve button-down. And they're just doing it. They're just like trudging up like they're taking the subway. <laughs> All right, you ready, Mingma? Ready? Ready? All right, let's do it, Jelly. All right. So as we were hiking up just now, Durga, who's one of our porters, said uh, he had a little treat in his pocket. It looks like, can I see? What's this right here? Ganja. Ganja. Yeah. So that's a ball of hash. So how how did you make this? Ganja is very fun. Now, ne, this ne, this minute that this ne, and it's all colored. So I'm gonna make it. That's crazy. I've tried making finger hash before. It's It takes a minute. It takes a lot of rubbing. I mean, this guy did it. We're about to get to the Gurung village that we're visiting. It sounds like there's going to be like a little welcome party happening. The Gurung have lived in remote villages in these mountains for centuries. Their culture is still steeped in tradition like honey hunting, which has been passed down for longer than anyone can remember.
They also know how to throw a party, and the local chief was eager to welcome us with a taste of their way of life. Or three. There's a three drink minimum here. Mm. So this is a beverage called Ruxi. It's made with millet. Um, it tastes a little like sake. As remote as this place is, everyone's got their cell phones out, they're snapping pictures and stuff. A couple of people just added me on Facebook. So, you know, even though we're really far out, things are changing, clearly. So as long as this village has been here, your people have been hunting honey. Why do you guys do it? So what's special about the honey that we're going to be harvesting now? Who exactly are the honey hunters from the Gurung tribe? Do the Gurung people have a special connection with the bees who are making this honey? As night fell on Talo Chipla, the Gurung sacrificed a chicken and performed a religious ceremony for the cliff gods to ensure everyone's safety for the hunt the next day. We're at the top of the hill. The bees have already started coming out. Get the bee off your head. Can somebody swat that off for me? You got that? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, where's, where's the hat? Where's my fucking hat? Give me my hat. <laughs> Everyone's kind of got a makeshift bee mask on, and a couple of guys are cooking up some frogs in there. Seems like it's kind of an event. Everybody's hanging out. There's bees everywhere. As soon as we got to the top of the hill, our camera guy, Billy, got stung in the back, so I know he probably hates holding that camera right now because these things hurt. Look at the size of these bees. Like, I just want to catch one to show you, but, like, look at these fuckers. They're massive. Are you guys expecting a good harvest this year? <laughs> It sounds like you guys use it medicinally, but like this stuff like fucks you up, you know, it, it gets you high. So do you guys use it recreationally as well? Ready? Yeah, ready. All right, let's go. No, 
So now they're making the ladder. We've got these two super thick ropes that are made of braided strips of bamboo. And they basically have like shards of wood with arrowheads carved into either end that they're jamming in. So they're making pretty quick work of it from bottom to top. They've already got a bunch of the rungs in and they're gonna hang this thing down over the edge. And some lunatic's gonna go harvest honey. Durga is showing me how to chop down leaves. So basically, we're gonna gather these up and this is what they use to burn to create that smoke down at the bottom of the cliff and at the top of the cliff to ward off the bees. You saw the ache me, huh? You can see how swole up his hands are right now. It's because he's been stung by bees just relentlessly on his hands. A lot of the guys at the camp have those kind of puffed up hands right now. It seems that it's almost like a sport. Like everyone has their own role, their own position, and they all have this common goal of harvesting the honey. And everyone sort of rallies around it more like it's, it's a game. But of course, there's definitely a very spiritual aspect to it, and they've been doing it for a long, long time. So it's somewhere in between those two things. My name is Astana. I've been doing this work for 10 years. How many practices have you done before you went down? I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. Have you ever made any mistake? No, no, no. I don't miss it, right? I don't miss it. अपने जी खासे जी वो जबरदस्ती करनी पुरानी किए नहीं बनना आपने खुशी दी करनी पुरे नहीं बनना तर समाज को उसमें अपने सारे बजे समाज लेने अपने बनी बो ते बारे जी त्यों कर दिखे रे पची पची आप आमले बने यही उस काम कर दे ज़्यादा खेरी मेले बने अपने बने त्यों मौसम में ते ते रामरूस में आमले मेले Jadi nanti saya ni lepas ni ya, esok ni kalau ada ayo, yo mana ada ayo, mana ada untuk khusyuk ni muncah. To get to the hives underneath the overhangs of the cliffs, the hunters work in teams. One cuts down the honey while another holds a basket that catches the combs when they fall. It used to be a job for one, but younger hunters are still learning the ropes. They're dumping all the broken up honeycomb onto this tarp here and then separating it because some of the honey has already been consumed by the baby bees, um, but some of it's good to go. So they're scooping that up and they're putting it in this little strainer made up of a straw basket and that's dripping down. So what's in that bucket is going to be the final product minus all the wax and the bees. Just the good shit. नाम मेरा अश्वादुर मेरे थावायु मेरे थावाओं ने तो अब अंदर बीस बसर दी 
अब हम बुढ़ा भैया लो अब हम पढ़ न सकते ना त्यों बड़ा फिर अब त्यों गांसी त्यों बजे वो तां सांने हिसाब के तां में कोई ले योगा रा कोई ले योगा रा बंदी ने अब हमने नगर ऐसे बनी तो तरीका ना जाए अली राम रचित ना पूजे रा अब देरी जीवन सके नहीं है बकार को ठिड़ा आ रहा है जाने तो इसी गांव में जा ठिड़ा आ रहा ये ये बनाया ये किस चीज के लिए बनाया हाँ ये काटने के लिए बनाया अच्छा तो आप आपने किसको सिखाया जैसे देखो ना हम तो अभी बच्चे हैं लड़का है जवान है हमारे जैसे थोड़ा उम्र वाला दादा दादी है ना वो लोग सिखाते हैं ये लोग देखो कितना उम्र गया तो जो छोटे बच्चे हैं अभी गुरुंग आपके गांव के वो तो बेसी सहार स्कूल जाते हैं निकल जाते हैं गांव से निकल जाते हैं तो उनको कौन सिखाता है ये ये करने नहीं वो लोग भी छुट्टी में आता है निकाल दे तो ये बात नहीं है कि गुरुंग के बच्चे बार बार चले जाते हैं और और ये काम जो है वो भूल जाते हैं तो मजा भी आता है आपको ना ट्रेडिशन भी है और मजा भी आता है क्योंकि हमारा पूरा गुरु है ना इधर ही मजा आने के लिए मजा आता है हाय वी कैन ट्राई सम ऑफ दिस ऑल राइट सो वी आर इटिंग द द वैक्स हियर वाव दैट इज रियली स्वीट एंड टेस्टी should I eat more or is that too much? Not too much. Not too much? No. Nah, I'll eat a little more. I don't want to go over the recommended dosage because that's the difference between just getting high and getting sick. I'm just going to eat another little wet corner of this and that's it for now. And I'll wait a little bit, maybe have a little more. Mm. One more? Yeah. All right, cool. Let's do it. Yeah. Drip into my mouth. <laughs> it tastes like strong. You know, store bought honey. It's sweet, but it doesn't have like that deep sort of like kind of a smoky flavor to it almost. And like it burns your throat a little bit on the way down. But it feels good. It feels like medicine. I'm starting to feel a little bit of something. Uh, it feels like I just took like a couple of hits of a joint. It's not super strong. It's not like knocking me out. I just feel like a little buzz, you know. Uh, and it's like it's funny as I'm like talking, it's actually getting like a little bit, a little bit stronger. Durga is definitely kind of stoned as well. Like you can tell, like he was just giggling and stuff. It's really a unique thing to this place and to these people, and they're loving it. And it's just honey that like you get from a cliff. And <laughs> I'll start that over. It's just honey that like you get from a cliff and you eat it and you get stoned. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys gotta try some of this shit. चलेगा भाई संबो संबो की जय हो संबो कहते हैं जय संबो संबो क्या होता है जय संबो इसका शिवाजी का नाम है ना एक आ ओके शहद का नशा वो चरस की नशा की तरह होता है कि ना वो नशा तो ये उड़े ही इंसान जस्ट तो लाइक सब मलाई है ना तरह नहीं इसको जो बिस्तारे दिन से आती है इसको जो कि ना वाले खुदा सामान्य दिन से है ना ये लाइफ वाले पहले पहले खाने मानसिल आती स्टेगर से उजाल ये तो थिजानी कर सके ना तो ये आपकी बहुत 
आपकी गाँव की बहुत लंबी ट्रेडिशन है है ना तो आप नहीं चाहते कि कहीं बाहर दुनिया में लोगों को बताएं कि ये हो रहा है या मलाई चाहन सही उठाऊं राम रोशवा है ना इस तो ठाऊं माय है ना बीमा आयर बोस्ता हेरिया है ना कुनी मानसी आ रही है देखी गई सही ना यो ठाऊं माय इस तो माल उनसा होने रहा है ना थाई सही ना की ना की है ना यो ठाऊं माय पानी सोची रात ये सॉली रोस्ट है ना सब पहले यो ठाऊं माय माल सा होने को रहा है ना देखी फौसी है ना आउंसा वाला जस्ट लाइक सा तो बहुत शुक्रिया भाई बहुत मजा है आपके साथ हैं करने मो पानी खुशी लायो तब वो सब आगे चले ना एक तो हम खुशी लाए फिर ही बैठने की ना बैठने तो हाँ बिल्कुल वापस आएंगे जी वापस आके शहर आएंगे तेरे साथ बिल्कुल वापस आएंगे भाई When the hunt was over for the day, we packed up camp and headed back down to Talo Chipla. Seeing their reverence for the hunt, it became clearer what this honey means to the Gurung. It's so ingrained in their way of life that it transcends its mere medicinal value, psychoactive properties, and sanctity. This is your beast, all right? You won't get me. Thanks for everything, my dude. That was super fun. <laughs> I feel I feel pretty fucked up honestly and it's a really good feeling. It's like icy hot. It's like a cold cold and warm feeling. It's kind of like being stoned but it's kind of like being on mushrooms as well. Like when you eat just like a gram and a half, 2 grams of mushrooms and uh you get like a little bit of that like almost locked jaw feeling like your muscles are tensing up a little bit and you feel loose and tight at the same time. Um A guy just walked by it like threw me off a little bit. <laughs> There goes another one. <laughs> But um that's about as articulate as I could be right now. Uh but yes, honey good. Honey good. <laughs> <That's it. laughs>